This last lesson on deductive logic is centered on the notions of soundness and completeness, two features of truth functional logic that capture why it works for evaluating sentences and arguments that we symbolize with it. These concepts will help tie together the different aspects of our study of deductive logic from the beginning of the course onward. After this lesson, you should be able to connect logical notions like entailment and provability to the notions of good and bad deductive arguments that we introduced right in our very first weeks. You should also be able to distinguish the notions of entailment and provability. You should be able to recognize what it means for truth functional logic to be sound and for it to be complete and then use the implications of soundness and completeness to determine how to test the various logical concepts that we've covered through the course. So way back in the beginning of the course, we were looking for a way to capture that in a good deductive argument, the conclusion has to follow from the premises. So to get this, we introduced this notion of validity. If the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. So we've covered two ways of showing validity. Entailment is the idea that when the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. Provability is the idea that if we assume the premises are true, we can use some basic rules of inference to prove that the conclusion must also be true. These should already sound quite similar. But let's consider in a little more detail these two ways of defining what it means for a conclusion to follow from some premises. Entailment was the notion we used to define validity when we were studying truth tables. So if A1 through AN entailed C, then that meant that if A1 to AN were the premises and C was the conclusion, we would have a valid argument on our hands. Here we're going to introduce a metalinguistic shorthand for entails, and that's this new symbol, the double turnstile. So this is a metalinguistic variable just like our curly A's and our curly C's. Those are variables that stand for any sentence of truth functional logic. The double turnstile describes what we can show with the truth table. So we can write A1 to AN double turnstile C, what you see in that third line there, when all the valuations that make A1 to AN true also make C true. So again, that should sound familiar from how we tested validity when we were looking at truth tables. Provability, on the other hand, was the notion we used to define validity when we were studying natural deduction. So if A1 to AN proved C, we would say that if A1 to AN were the premises and C were the conclusion, we would have a valid argument. And we have a metalinguistic variable for provability too. That's the single turnstile. So we have different symbols for these different notions of validity. This one we use to describe what we can show with the proof. We can write A1 to AN single turnstile C on this third line on the bottom half there when we can construct a proof that starts by assuming A1 to AN are true and we can prove that C is true from those. So there's a proof that assumes A1 to AN and ends with C. That should sound like exactly what we did when we tested validity with proofs. We've made this distinction now between entailment and provability, but it turns out they're both equally good for showing that an argument that we symbolize with truth functional logic is a valid argument. And that's because truth functional logic is what we call sound and complete. When we say that truth functional logic is sound, we're saying that whenever a conclusion can be proved from some premises, those premises entail the conclusion. So the direction of soundness is provability to entailment. 
Using our new symbol, we can write this as if a1 to an single turnstile c, then a1 to an double turnstile c. That's the formal definition of soundness. In plain English, this means that for truth functional logic, none of the arguments that we prove to be valid can be shown to be invalid if we were using a truth table. That's a good result. When we say that truth functional logic is complete, we're saying that whenever some premises entail a conclusion, then we can prove that conclusion from those premises. So we can use our new symbols again to give a formal definition of completeness. If a1 to an double turnstile c, if we can write that. We can also say that a1 to an single turnstile c. So that's the completeness direction. And this one in plain English means that for truth functional logic, every argument that can be shown to be valid using a truth table can also be proved using our proof rules. Again, that's a good result. So by showing that truth functional logic is sound and complete, we show that the methods we use to evaluate sentences and the relations between them are ones that work. So going over the proofs for soundness and completeness are way beyond the scope of this course, though there is a brief overview in the text. But the takeaway from soundness and completeness is that we have two good tests for validity. And in fact, these notions, provability and, and entailment, are equivalent. And the fact that truth functional logic is sound and complete shows that. And from soundness and completeness, it turns out that more than just entailment and provability are equivalent. All tautologies are theorems, and vice versa. All unsatisfiable sets of sentences are provably inconsistent, and vice versa. So we covered all of those semantic concepts on the left-hand side when we first introduced truth tables. And we've looked at some of those proof-theoretic concepts already on the right. So what the table shows is the equivalent notions of each of those semantic concepts in terms of proof notions. So the new ones are provable contradiction, provable contingency, and provable consistency. So since these semantic and proof theoretic concepts are equivalent, this means that they can be defined in terms of truth tables or in terms of proof. So this is a table from chapter 21 of our text and it captures how each of the logical concepts we covered can be defined in each of the ways, either in terms of truth tables or in terms of proofs. We've covered each of these notions in lessons 4.1, 4.2, 5.1, and 6.3, but if you want to review, they're nicely summarized here, so you, it may be worth pausing the video and reviewing the definitions. What do we do with these equivalences that we get from soundness and completeness? Well, given those definitions, we can determine when it's appropriate or helpful to use either a truth table or a natural deduction proof to show that some concept is applicable or not. So again, we have a table from chapter 21 of the text, and this one shows when we should use a truth table and when we should use a proof. Some of these, of course, can be shown with either a truth table or a proof, or easily shown with either. So this applies to showing that an argument is valid, but not invalid, that two sentences are equivalent, that a set of sentences are inconsistent, but not consistent, and that a sentence is a theorem or a contradiction. So we can use the information here to determine how to test for any of these properties. So for example, if you're asked to test equivalence, you could either use two proofs or you could use a truth table 
looking at both sentences and whether they have the same truth value in each row. So these notions of soundness and completeness sum up our study of truth functional logic. In covering TFL, we have arrived at a system that symbolizes the core elements of deductive inference, starting with letters that stand for simple sentences and a few logical connectives. And with that simple system for symbolizing language, we get truth tables and proofs as our two tools for evaluating whether basic arguments or inferences are good or bad. 